Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today's topic is stem cell therapy for ankylosing spondylitis. So first of all, what is AS? Well, it's a rare type of arthritis, also known as Bechtaru disease. It usually starts in the lower back. It may affect the neck as well. The word ankylosis means fused bones or tissue, and the word spondylitis means inflammation in the spine. The hallmark feature of AS is the involvement of the SI joints during the progression of the disease. And unfortunately, it can affect other areas of the body uh, with joints, maybe shoulders, hips, knees, hands. Also the eyes, maybe the lungs, the heart. If you've ever heard of anterior uveitis, that is a complication in the eyes from AS. So diagnosing AS is not exactly straightforward. Usually the pain starts before the age of 35 to 45. It starts and gets worse gradually. It lasts for at least three months. The pain is linked with morning stiffness that usually lasts for more than an hour, upwards of three hours. The pain usually improves with exercise and it often goes through family members. So testing for the disease, the clearest sign of the disease is a change in the SI joints at the base of the low back. And when you look at x-rays, there's often bony erosions, fusion, calcification. You see textbooks talking about what you see here. I'm pointing to the dagger sign, where through the spine you have this calcification uh, line. Blood tests often show an elevated CRP and SED rate, which are markers of inflammation. Um, RF factor is negative, which is why it's called a seronegative spondyl arthropathy. HLA B27 is a genetic marker. 5% um, of those who have HLA B27 positive end up having ankylosing spondylitis. So conventional treatment options for AS include first-line therapy of anti-inflammatories, exercise, PT, um, along with um, potential steroid injections and uh, what they call disease-modifying agents like sulfasalazine and methotrexate up to 80% can get significant relief, but there are significant side effects with sulfasalazine, methotrexate, steroid injections. So it's not always uh, in a patient's best interest to use those if they have severe side effects. Second line therapy includes TNF alpha blockers. Uh, you can see the names of them there. Uh, those are FDA um, approved and uh, IL-17 inhibitors and possibly narcotics. Once again, significant side effects potentially for those. Stem cell therapy for AS represents the new paradigm. It's a non-operative treatment that can actually repair and regenerate damaged tissue. It can provide relief, improve function significantly. Uh, it's very low risk, outpatient. We've seen it to be extremely effective. And for a, a condition that's pretty rare, there's actually some really good research and our experience too on how well it works uh, for AS. Our protocol involves a combination typically of IV, stem cell, and focal injections too. How do stem cell biologics work? Well, a lot of patients think that when they get an injection or an infusion of stem cells, those stem cells are gonna be the ones turning into the specialty cells in your body. And that's typically not what happens. Um, I've listed here the things that typically do happen. One is called paracrine signaling, which is basically cell-to-cell -cell communication. Uh, the stem cells and other uh, proteins and exosomes and whatnot will recruit the cells within your body to help repair and regenerate. They'll promote new blood supply. Uh, they'll reduce the death of cells like neurons, chondrocytes, things like that. The key thing in this page is uh, the immunomodulation. So the biologics are very effective at, first of all, reducing inflammation dramatically. We'll see that in a moment. And helping uh, stopping the body from fighting against itself. All right. So let's go through a few studies. You'll get an idea of just how well these uh, procedures work. Ankylosing spondylitis and mesenchymal stem cell therapy. Uh, this is a study from a couple years ago that uh, showed that mesenchymal stem cells have considerable immunomodulatory, they reduce inflammation, they help stop the body from fighting itself, and regenerative properties that can attenuate, which means uh, lessen, the inflammatory responses and help tissue repair by cell-to-cell -cell contact. So that's called the paracrine um, 
factors. Mesenchymal stem cell infusion in ankylosing spondylitis patients is safe and beneficial and effective in decreasing the related clinical symptoms and severity of the disease. So this was a great study. Effects and safety of allogeneic mesenchymal stem cell IV infusion in active AS patients who failed nonsteroidals. So this was a study conducted uh, over five months, and each patient got four IV infusions a week apart of 1 million stem cells per kilogram. These were umbilical stem cells, and that's a lot. I mean, think about the average male or, hum or, um, or average human and um, weighs about, what, 70 kilograms? So that's 70 million stem cells per infusion, okay? Uh, about 30 patients. The patient's symptoms dramatically improved. The CRP and SED rate decreased significantly. They took serial MRIs and they showed that there was a significant reduction of inflammation. And the theory, and this is actually reality, is that the mesenchymal stem cells migrate to areas of inflammation. And then they use cell-to-cell -cell contact, the paracrine signaling, to reduce inflammation. That's actually not just a theory. That's been shown by Arnold Kaplan's group at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland that when you inject a stem cell biologic or infuse it, it will migrate around and find areas in the body that have increased inflammation, and that's where it will deposit itself. Here's a study uh, out of experimental and therapeutic medicine a few years back. Infusion of umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells alleviates symptoms of AS. This was out of uh, China, uh, and they used umbilical MSCs, um, and they noted that you, know, you don't have to harvest from the iliac crest or the, or the fat of the patient. Um, the percentage of stem cells in umbilical cord blood is much, much higher than in the bone marrow. The cells, the cells are easily uh, cultured, much easier than bone marrow. Uh, they're much more active stem cells than you get from bone marrow. Uh, all patients, there were five patients. It wasn't like 50, but all of them experienced significant pain relief, and the scores for ankylosing spondylitis activity and severity were decreased following the infusion. The results indicate that the umbilical stem cells is safe, feasible, with limited side effects. You can see on the right side here, one of the diagrams from the right up. In each patient, look at the CRP, how much it decreased over six months, and it stayed way down, okay? That is fantastic. This is interesting. Bone marrow MSCs in RA, spondyloarthritis, and AS problems rather than solutions. So this is a recent study where they looked at um, graphs of normal autologous or allogeneic bone marrow might become one of the best solutions, but there are a subset of them which could actually make things worse. They showed that there was an abnormal behavior of bone marrow MSCs and or their progeny that was found in all these disease conditions, which was not seen with any of the umbilical cord MSCs that they tested. So just another reason, you know, you really don't need to have an autologous procedure. With the allograft umbilical cord from a donor, they don't get rejected. They uh, work really, really well. They're much more active stem cells than the ones that you have as we get older. So in conclusion, you know, there's a lot of studies. I only included a few, but many of them are small. There's some early clinical trials. And our own experience showed that stem cell therapy for AS is not only safe, but it's typically very, very effective. Now, anytime you look at these studies uh, for things like AS or RA or whatnot, it appears that high stem cell numbers are necessary. And that is one of the benefits of our treatment, center in Mex treatment centers in Mexico where we have very high stem cell numbers I'll show you in just a moment. The combo is what we've seen to work the, the best, the IV as well as some injections around the spine. And umbilical, umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells gr give great results. Autologous gives good results too, but for the reasons I just mentioned, umbilical cord is why we use those. So I do want to mention that if somebody talks to you about embryonic stem cell therapy or what's called induced pluripotent stem cell therapy, run away from that. That is not ready for prime time. The only places we've seen doing that is maybe in the Ukraine or other um, international places that are um, just indiscriminately using those, but they are not ready. There are problems with those. The ones that are safe and effective are the ones that we use, 
which is stem cell therapy with mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells. That's the way to go. So let's talk about our treatment program in Mexico. We have several locations, Tijuana, Mexicali, and Cancun is coming on soon. Tijuana is only 20 minutes from the San Diego airport. It's very fast to get there. We provide the transportation from the airport to and back. Um, and we have a patient concierge representative who will escort you to your visit and treatment. The process starts very simply with a free phone consultation with one of our licensed, experienced stem cell doctors. They'll give you all the time you need, answer your questions, listen to your medical history. We'll have um, someone assist you with obtaining medical records so that the doctor can look at those as well. Let's talk about the cells for a moment. Uh, most of the magic happens at the lab. That's true of any stem cell therapy. We've been working with GenCell for years now out of Mexico City. They have a pristine safety record ever since they started seven years ago. Their quality assurance is more stringent than that of the FDA. Now, I don't say that lightly. You can watch the videos we have on our website that show that and the reports that come along with the um, uh, biologics. The umbilical cord stem cells in Mexico are allowed to be cultured. That is not allowed in the United States. Um, so what that means is that we're able to get up to very high numbers of stem cells with extremely high viability because we don't need to use preservative. So it's over 95% viability. The lab does not culture past the fifth generation, which means the stem cells are very active. They're very potent. They're very pure. Unlike most international centers, they won't tell you this, but they culture them so much, 10th, 15th, 20th generation, they're not functional anymore. They just, uh, the analogy I use is that of a Xerox copier. The Xerox copies look amazing when they, uh, they first start to go, but as you get more and more, the ink starts to run out and the copies look nothing like the original. So our treatment starts at only $2,975 for 30 million stem cells. Most people with AS and other systemic issues will opt for the $50 million, which is only an additional $1,000 at $3,975. We have additional programs where you can come either for a five-day stretch or three or four times a year. We give you a significant break on that. But our treatment is sort of like getting a Mercedes for the cost of, you know, say, a Ford or a Chevy. It's an amazing cost-effective value with a very pure uh, biologics, very experienced providers. Um, and this is the whole reason that, you know, I put this together years ago. We've been featured on all the major media channels. Um, we received a lot of awards this year. Two of them was the 10 most innovative companies of the year, as well as the 50 smartest companies of the year. Uh, visit us online at stemcelltreatmentclinic.com and then call us to get the process started. 888-988-0515. We look forward to hearing from you and thanks so much for watching.